Hi everybody, and welcome to my 10th video on beams. In this video I'm going to be finding what's the biggest possible value of D of this overhanging beam so that it does not fail given the conditions that you see here with a maximum bending stress and applied load Q due to its own weight of the piece hanging over. And here we're given the moment of inertia and some information about the centroid and such like. So I dreamed up this problem after watching a documentary on bridge building techniques and when they build bridges alright they kind of build them like you know either they can to leave them or they use some other method the method you see here is a sort of a cantilever method especially this piece here alright you can see they can't really build from this base working out to the middle of the river else it would just topple over so they build out in each direction the same amount so the moment will you know balance each other out Another interesting thing I just want you to notice about this bridge is see how the concrete gets thicker and thinner as we go to the middle and then thicker toward the post. That's because of the bending moment. If you do a bending moment of this bridge, you would find that it would be great here at the support and then go up and then down. So they just match the amount of concrete needed to match the bending moment, right? Because we know that stress is my over i. So there's a greater bending moment. If you increase the moment of inertia of that piece, you're essentially keeping the stress constant. So I would presume, even though I don't know, that the stress in this whole piece here is approximately the same because the, as you increase the bending moment, the closer you get toward the poles, you're also increasing the moment of inertia. All right, so another bridge, you know, construction technique is called incremental bridge launching. And there's some great animations on YouTube of this, but basically what it does is it involves building a piece of bridge out on a piece of land, and then you like increment it out onto where you need. You uh, cement it in place, you fasten it in place, and you move all your bridge building equipment onto that piece. You build the next section of the bridge, and you jack it out, and you go that way until you've completed building the bridge. So I guess that's more what this problem is, right? How big of a distance can we possibly jack this out? Alright, so this is like totally a calculation somebody would do. So we know that stress max occurs when we have the maximum bending moment. The greatest distance away from the neutral axis, in our case it's going to be right there, over I, which was handily given to us here. Alright, so let's go about and find the maximum bending stress. I'm keeping the negative out of this equation. I'll just figure out the sign later. So maximum bending stress we can get by doing what we've always done and plot a bending moment diagram of this situation. So it's equivalent to this. Right, it's equivalent to that bar sticking out of a wall. Now let's just go straight into a free body diagram of this thing. Alright, so there you have it. So I've collapsed this whole load, applied load, into a single point load right at the center of this distribution. Alright, so we can say it's a distance d by 2 away. And what's the magnitude? Well, force per length, q, times total length, d. So it's just going to be qd. Okay, so now we can move into finding the reaction moment and the reaction force. Alright, and there we have it. Those are our two reactions, both in moment and forces. Now we want to find the internal moment. So what we're going to do, like we've always done, is make a cut. 
I don't think you can imagine it to be here, or if you want, why not up here? And that's going to be made at distance x away from the base of where it starts to bend over. Alright, so let's get a free body diagram of that piece. All right, so the applied force on this piece, it's of a length x. So the applied force is just gonna be the force per length times length. The force per length, well that's q. So the total force is just gonna be q x, just like that. Now we don't need a shear force, so we can go straight away into just taking the some of the moments about the cut piece here that makes it so that we don't need to know the shear force and we get this um, All right, so that's our final equation for the moment. So the easiest way to find the maximum moment is instead of deciphering the equation, just draw a nice little diagram or a bending moment diagram of the situation. All right, so let's just take a look at this equation here and find out what's going on. So when x equals zero, this term goes away, and this term goes away, we have negative qd squared by two. All right, now this increases negatively, so the negative x squared tells us it's concave down, and at the end of the beam, it's gotta be zero, so it's gonna go like this. All right, so now what's the maximum bending moment? All right, so mathematically, the, ma bending, the maximum bending moment would be right here at zero. But that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the magnitude of the maximum bending moment. So basically, just the greatest value it can be, regardless of the sign. And that's going to be this, QD. All right. So now we can go back to our original equation that we needed to solve, this one right here, and plug in what we know, what we still need to know. M max, so it's QD squared by two. All right, now we still have Y max over I. So I is given to us, and Y maximum, well that's gonna be 0.2. So y is measured from here, from the neutral axes of the section. And then it could either be 0.2 up here, 0.2 down there, negative 0.2, positive 0.2. But because it's symmetrical, it doesn't matter which one you choose. It can be plus or minus 2. So like I've been doing so far, I'm just ignore the plus or minus signs and just use the magnitude. So 
All right. So then moving along and solving for D, and then plugging in the values. All right, once again, I'm putting everything in terms of the fundamental unit, so we don't need to decipher it in terms of, you know, kilonewtons per millimeter or something weird, just newtons and meters. And it turns out D is equal to 40.8 meters. Alright, so let's just go back to our original problem, what we're actually solving. Well, that's the distance we can push out this particular I beam before it's going to fail in compression or tension. Actually, it'll fail on both at the same time because we solved it for plus and minus of both of those values. All right, and once again, looking back at our bridge building techniques, 40 meters, all right, that's, that's about reasonable. We can expect that. This looks about to be 40 meters to me. All right, you guys, hope you enjoyed this bit of a sort of a practical example of bending stresses, and I'll see you in my next bunch of videos on beams and everything else to do with these awesome things.